Welcome everybody to this lecture in international trade policy. So you were exposed already to models of international trade theory and the overall idea of international trade theory is to have models which show that international trade is beneficial. So for example we looked at the Ricardo model or the Heckscher Olin model and we were able to show that international trade will benefit the society. The overall structure of such kind of model is that in a first step we look at the economy in Autarchy. Afterwards we change this assumption and we are looking at the economy which uh, is allowed to trade internationally. So the step is in the beginning Autarchy afterwards free trade. This pattern will change when it comes to trade policy, like these steps are reversed. In trade policy, in the first step, we look at what happens if the economy is allowed to trade freely. Afterwards, we are inserting some trade restrictions, for example, a tariff or an export subsidy, and we want to know how does the introduction of a tariff or an export subsidy affect the welfare of the economy and how does it affect the different groups within one economy. In order to motivate this analysis, I would like to once more refresh your knowledge with respect to consumer surplus and producer surplus and we'll look at one very famous scene of a movie uh, the movie is called Just Go With It. It's a well-known movie with uh, Adam Sandler. And uh, if uh, Adam Sandler is the actor, then you can expect that he got in trouble with some woman. So this is indeed the case. So Adam Sandler, he pretend that he has a family, that he's divorced, he has two kids. And um, he wants to show his new girlfriend that he's a good daddy. But the truth is that he has no family at all. But his new girlfriend wants to go on a holiday trip with Mr. Sandler and his kids. So Adam Sandler is in big trouble to find someone who can pretend to be his kids. So he needs some kids who act as if they are their own kids. Right now, he's trying to hire one girl to serve as an actor. And uh, this is a, a very famous negotiation scene. Uh, you can see here uh, one picture of the scene, two videos, like a shorter one, a longer one. And let's have a look at this video. I'm just saying, telling the truth is not in the cards right now. I thought I thought you'd be excited to have an acting job. If it's an acting job, we should get paid. Yeah, you're gonna get paid in experience. I want to actually get paid. <laughs> All right, what do you want? Six hundred dollars for the day, plus overtime if we go over eight hours. I'll do my own hair and makeup, and I want you to pay for the six week intensive acting camp that my mom can't afford. $50 for the day and a two-week acting class at the YMCA nearest you. $500 and a four-week acting class. $300 and a three-week class. Done. I would have done it for $500. I would have done it for the experience. Yeah, let's analyze this negotiation scene. So I have inserted a downward sloping demand function. This stems from Adam Sandler, like the man, and uh, he's demanding acting services. The girl is offering acting services. So in the intersection of the supply and the demand curve, we find the optimal price as well as the optimal quantity, like the number of days traded. Uh, 